Hi, I'm Will Dean. I wish I could say I was in Waterstones, Piccadilly right now, but I'm not. I'm here at home in the Swedish forest. And I'd love to talk a little bit about my new book, Black River, and also about three books that are very special to me and that have inspired me and helped me as a writer. This is Bernie, by the way. Hello, we're now inside my writing cabin in the Swedish forest, and I want to talk about some books. First of all, Black River, which is my latest Tuva Moodyson thriller. It's set in Värmland in central Sweden. And unlike the first two books in the series, it's set over midsummer, which I think is a really atmospheric, moody time of year in rural Sweden. It's a time of year full of folklore and tradition, and people don't sleep very much. It doesn't really get dark. So it adds a kind of almost like a fever dream quality to the story. Uh, at the beginning of this book, Tuva finds out that her best friend in the world, Tammy, has gone missing. So Tuva races back to Gavrik, this small fictional town that reminds readers a lot of Twin Peaks and Northern Exposure and Fargo. She races back up there to investigate where Tammy has gone. And Tammy and Tuva have this very special bond, this beautiful friendship between them. It's extraordinarily tight. So it means the world to Tuva that she, she must get out there and delve deep into the vast forests and the wilderness of central Sweden to try and locate her best friend. But enough about me and my books. I want to talk about some of the books that I love. I'm going to start with No Country for Old Men by Cormac McCarthy. I'm a huge fan of McCarthy. Uh, the Road is my favourite novel of all time. But No Country for Old Men is a real inspiration to me. It is a wonderfully evocative kind of crime novel. Uh, I love the sense of place. I love the way that that borderland uh landscape and riverscape that arid kind of world on the southern border of the united states is depicted it has one of the best antagonists one of the best villains ever written in the form of anton chigurh uh famously played by javier bardem in the movie version who is incredibly chilling and controlled and calm he's a very scary uh villain. He's a brilliant villain. The coin toss scene in the gas station of No Country for Old Men, I think, is one of the most tense pieces of writing I've ever come across. But this book also has something else, which I try and bring to my Tuva Moody Son novels. I think it's nice if you have an element of darkness balanced by some levity. And in No Country for Old Men, there's actually a lot of humour, there's a lot of love, and there's a lot of uh, reminiscing and, and thinking on life. Um, it's beautifully done. I love the balance. It's an incredibly good book. Second of all, I want to talk about Homegoing by Yagi Asi. This book was my favourite novel the year it came out. I was absolutely blown away by the skill of Yagi Asi. She is an incredibly gifted storyteller. This book is fairly slim, but it spans centuries. It spans continents. It starts off in the Gold Coast on, in West Africa, and it finishes up centuries later in New York City. And I'm in awe of this novel, and I'm in awe of this storytelling. This is kind of a string of stories that are all very closely connected. And each story in itself is quite short and quite complete. But together, they form this incredible piece of work. And I'm still not quite sure how she did it. It's that amazing. I reread it in January this year and it really knocks me sideways, this novel. And to think that it's a debut, incredible. Uh, the final book I'd like to talk about is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. I love this book. It's a kind of a Midwest masterpiece. Uh, Gillian Flynn I think sometimes doesn't quite get the credit she deserves because Gone Girl was such a global hit and a clever book, but Sharp Objects is really something special. Uh, it, it's about um, a female journalist who returns from Chicago to her hometown of Wind Gap, 
which is this fantastically evocative, well-depicted, uh, claustrophobic town in Midwest America. And girls are going missing. She has to investigate this. She's an investigative journalist. And she's uh, based with her mother and her family, who are all kind of toxic in different ways and very complicated. And she's a very complicated protagonist, and a fascinating protagonist. But I think Gillian Flynn's observations about life, about the human condition, about our frailties are razor sharp. That's probably the wrong <laughs> description to use about this book. But her observations and her writing, her prose is just fantastic. And I, I really recommend the book. I really recommend all three of these books.